It's 6.45 a.m. This is the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The news edited by Lal Malavarachi, read by Saundithavam. The President will visit New Delhi today to participate in Prime Minister Modi's swearing-in ceremony. The International Monetary Fund has expressed confidence about Sri Lanka's debt restructuring program. 500 new buses will be added to the Sisusaria school bus service. Saudi Arabia offers free Hajj pilgrimage for Sri Lankan Muslim tri forces personnel. The CID to investigate the alleged threats posed to SJB parliamentarian Dr. Harsha De Silva. In foreign news, the UN adds Israel to a list of militaries committing violations against children. In sports, the West Indies Sri Lanka women's cricket matches to be played from the 15th of June. President Ronald Vikramasinghe is expected to reach New Delhi to participate in Prime Minister Modi's swearing-in ceremony. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will begin his third term today in New Delhi. President Vikramasinghe is expected to participate in several bilateral meetings as well during his visit, according to the officials from the President's office. The International Monetary Fund has expressed confidence that Sri Lanka will reach agreements with external commercial creditors consistent with program parameters. Speaking at the IMF press conference, IMF Communication Department Director Julie Kozak said there has been sufficiently strong progress on the debt restructuring front. Quoting, program performance is strong with most quantitative and structural conditionality for the second review met or implemented with delay and reforms are still going on in some areas, unquote, she said. 500 new buses will be added to the Sisusaria school bus service. Minister Bandula Ginavadana instructed the National Transport Commission to take action immediately in this connection. There are 1,537 buses in service for the benefit of school students at present. Of them, 726 buses are private buses. The government provides a subsidy of 2,000 million rupees annually to maintain this service. People make more requests to deploy additional buses to school services as transport costs have gone high at present. Accordingly, the ministers instructed the National Transport Commission to take action to deploy 500 more buses for school service under the funds of the commission. Plans are being formulated to establish a new city for residents living along the Kalani River bank. This city is envisioned to offer comprehensive facilities, including hospitals, schools and residential complexes. Given the presence of government institutions such as the IDH Hospital and the Sri Lanka Transport Board Depot in the area, discussions will be initiated with local residents to garner input and facilitate the implementation of future initiatives. The aim is to develop a comprehensive plan that receives a consensus from all stakeholders and to realize the success of the program within the next decade. This news broadcast comes to you from the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation. The next generation digital banking partner, People's Bank. The Saudi Arabian government has offered Muslim members of the Sri Lankan tri forces a sponsored opportunity to perform the annual Hajj pilgrimage this year for the first time in history, according to the Defence Ministry. This comes after a request made by the State Minister of Defence, Pramit Bandara Tendakon, from the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Khalid Hamoud al Khantani. In response to the State Minister's request, the Saudi Ambassador had met necessary arrangements to obtain five special quotas from the Saudi Arabian government, the statement said. For the first time, five special sponsored quotas were made available for the Muslim tri forces personnel this year, it said. As the crescent moon for the month of the Hajj has been sighted, Muslims in Sri Lanka will celebrate the Hajj festival on the 17th of June, the Kalambu Grand Mosque announced. Public Security Minister Tiran Alas has directed IGP Deshabandu Tenakon to take the Criminal Investigation Department's activities to investigate the alleged threats in the wake of claims made by the Samagi Jana Balavegia MP Dr. Harsha De Silva. During the parliamentary session recently, Dr. De Silva revealed that he had been receiving threats to his life. 
Accordingly, he has been asked to make a statement at the Criminal Investigation Department. That concludes local news. Enjoy seamless shopping, open LCs, settle bills and transfer funds instantly, anywhere and anytime. With People's Bank Digital Solutions, you're empowered to do more whenever and wherever you want. Unlock a world of modern banking conveniences with People's Bank, your next generation digital banking partner. People's Bank. The main news story is brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. The Anuradhapura Municipal Commissioner declared the Anuradhapura Sacred City as a rabies-free zone, assuring devotees that there is no need for concern. The Association of Veterinarians for Human Management of Animal Population said. The Municipal Commissioner Ruan Vijayasinghe said there is no danger of rabies within the Anuradhapura Municipal Council area due to the highly organized anti-rabies programs over the last four years. He said that rabies vaccinations had been administered to stray dogs during World Rabies Day every year for four consecutive years and more than 90% of the stray dogs have been operated. He further requests the people in the area to bring their animals to the clinics organized by the Municipal Council and get the rabies vaccination administered. That came to you in the main news story. The main news story was brought to you by Siddhalepa Vedamahatma. Moving on to Watchlight, medical clinics are being organized to address the health care needs of individuals in disaster-affected areas with the support of foreign medical teams conducting clinic camps. Additionally, several medical clinics are being facilitated through divisional secretariats. The involvement of army medical teams is also poised to contribute to the improvement of the health conditions of those affected. The affected people are being requested to take part in these medical camps and came to you in Watchlight. Coming up, World News. Making headlines this morning, the UN adds Israel to list of militaries committing violations against children. The UN confirms 11 staff detained by Houthis in Yemen. And NASA Earthrise astronaut dies at 90 in plane crash. The UN has added the Israeli military to a list of offenders failing to protect children last year. Israel's ambassador to the UN says. Gilad Erdan, who said he had been notified of the decision on Friday, described the decision as shameful. Foreign Minister Israel Kotz said it would have consequences for Israel's relations with the UN. A spokesman for the Palestinian president told the Reuters news agency the decision was a step closer to holding Israel accountable for what he called its crimes. Thousands of children have been killed in Israel's campaign against Hamas in Gaza and thousands more are in desperate need of humanitarian assistance. The UN has called for the immediate release of 11 of its personnel who have been taken and detained by the Houthi movement in Yemen. The employees were taken in various parts of the conflict-torn country in what appears to be a coordinated crackdown. UN spokesman Stefan Dirich said the world body was pursuing all available channels to secure their safe and unconditional release as rapidly as possible. The armed group sees itself as part of an Iranian-led axis of resistance against Israel, the US and the wider West, and has declared its support for Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Apollo 8 astronaut Bill Anders, who snapped one of the most famous photographs taken in outer space, has died in a plane crash at the age of 90. Officials say a small aircraft he was flying crashed into the sea off Washington state. Anders' son Greg confirmed that his father's body was recovered. Anders, who was a lunar module pilot on the Apollo 8 mission, took the iconic Earthrise photograph, one of the most memorable and inspirational images of Earth from space. Back to the headlines of the world news, the UN adds Israel to a list of militaries committing violations against children. The UN confirms 11 staff detained by Houthis in Yemen. And NASA Earthrise astronaut dies at 90 in plane crash. That's world news. Development news. The Health Minister Dr. Ramesh Patirana says that cabinet approval has been granted to make the Karapitiya Teaching Hospital the third national hospital in the country. It will be renamed as the Gaul National Hospital in the future. 
Accordingly, in addition to the Kalambo and Kandy National Hospitals, the Karapitiya Teaching Hospital will also be grouped as a national hospital and came to you in development news. Moving on with sports news. The West Indies national women's cricket team started their training at the NCC Indoor Stadium recently to focus on three ODIs and three T20Is against the Sri Lanka women's team. Earlier, three ODIs were scheduled to be played in goal, but later Sri Lanka cricket announced that the ODI matches will be played in Hambaltota on the same dates, June 15th, 18th and 21st, while the T20Is will be played on the 24th, 26th and 28th of this month at the same venue. That's Sports News. We take a look at Business News next. Go eka kiana youth ticket, life cricket, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for again, I'll take a pugina, a backer on the youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship recommender. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am a plan for your dream. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Brown's Hotels and Resorts have invested nearly 500 million rupees to open the Ayugiri Wellness Resort in Sigiriya. This is the Hotel Shane's 14th Hotel to be opened and with this, Hotel's 22 rooms, the group has now over 1,000 rooms in their portfolio in Sri Lanka. The CEO of Brown's Hotel, Exat Vijayaratna, said that this is an Ayurveda hotel with yoga facilities. That came to you in Business News. We take a look at Economic News next. Business News, sponsored by National Savings Bank, the safest place for your money. Go ekatiana youth ticket, life cricket, change ticket, near meta set trainer. As for again, I'll take a pugina, a backer on the youth ticket, near meta set trainer, friendship recommender. The all new NSB Ithrumitru account, NSB I am, a plan for your dream. On to economic news. The inflow of workers' remittances to Sri Lanka has exhibited an improvement in recent months, with the country recording an inflow of 544.4 million US dollars for May 2024. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the cumulative figure for the period from January to May 2024 is 2,624.4 million US dollars. This is an increase of 11.8% compared to the same period last year. That's economic news. Weather report. The prevailing rainy condition in the southwestern part of the island is expected to enhance to some extent in the next few days. Showers will occur at times in the western, Sabragamo, northwestern, and also in the southern provinces and in the Kandy and Noorelia districts. Fairly heavy showers above 50 millimeters are likely at some places in the western and Sabragamo provinces and in the Noorelia, Gaul, and Martyra districts. Several spells of showers will occur in the northern and north-central provinces and in the Marthalaya district. Showers or thunder showers may occur at a few places in the Uba province and in the Anuradhapura and Batiklao districts in the evening or night. Strong winds of about 40 to 50 km per hour can be expected at times over the northern, north-central, northwestern, and also in the Trincomalee and Hambantata districts. To conclude this bulletin of news, a recap of the headlines. The President will visit New Delhi today to participate in Prime Minister Modi's swearing-in ceremony. The International Monetary Fund has expressed confidence about Sri Lanka's debt restructuring program. 500 new buses will be added to the Sisus area school bus service. Saudi Arabia offers free Hajj pilgrimage for Sri Lankan Muslim tri forces personnel. The CID to investigate the alleged threats posed to SJB parliamentarian Dr. Harsha De Silva. The UN adds Israel to a list of militaries committing violations against children. And the West Indies Sri Lanka women's cricket matches to be played from the 15th of June. With that, we conclude this morning's news broadcast. And now it's back to your host, Abhishek, across the glass pane. Good morning, Abhishek, and it's all yours.